Daniel Nelson here with Make My Music on a special funky week. This week I have a really cool project I'm funking around with. A great, great, great jam band from Chicago, Mr. Blotto, who I actually had in the studio back in Chicago 10 years, 12 years ago. I had them come in and play two songs live, full live, which was really fun because recording a jam band live is a memorable experience for anyone who's ever done it because there's performances that come out of thin air. A lot of it's kind of free flowing. They just go and see what they come up with. This track specifically is a track that is very reggae, very kind of grooving. And I've been listening to music lately that has one element in the funkiness side of the bass that I've been noticing all the way back to the 60s and stuff. And a lot of that is just doubling parts with the bass guitar. So in reality, they could be doubling a piano, doubling a clavinet, doubling any sort of element, organ or whatever, playing the same melody and same part as the bass. You know, the Wrecking Crew did that quite a bit. The Beatles did it quite a bit. The band did it quite a bit. Bob Marley and the Wailers did it quite a bit, where they would double the bass line. So for this track, I felt like, okay, the song is really sitting really good, but it's still missing something. The lineup was the drums, bass, lead guitar, acoustic rhythm guitar, and an organ. Listening back to these old records, I've come to realize that there's a funkiness going on when you combine a bass guitar and a clavinet with a wah pedal. I was just listening to the Edgar Winters band, Free Ride, which is this awesome 70s track. And I'm focusing on the bass and I'm like, there's a clavinet going with that that has this great wah that's going in and out of the track that is really making the bass come way up alive. It's making you focus on the melodic side of the bass. Because sometimes, as you know, with bass guitar, it's just really difficult to make things kind of punch out, even when it's melodic. So you try to find ways harmonically or EQ-wise to punch that. With this, you're augmenting, as a performer, augmenting with a different instrument that has a really high bitey frequency, the same melodic part of the bass. Today, we don't have to really do that if we don't have the time or the players to do it. So for me, what I did was, just like in the other video I've done in the past where I've taken the bass audio and converted it to MIDI, to extend the low end with a synth low end thing. I'm actually doing the same process where I'm taking the bass track, converting it to MIDI, and then putting a clavinet sample instrument on it. And then I'm putting a wah pedal plug-in on top of that and playing the wah pedal to the song. This gives it a humanized feeling. It also gives me a, a sense of connection to the song where I'm performing with the song, depending on the vibe, and what this does is adds an element, again, of humanizing and just a cool little funky way to add a little more edge and a little more personality to the track. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. The first bit of business I do when I'm converting bass or any kind of audio system to a MIDI track, I will right click it, and then I will end up going copy audio as MIDI. What this does, is it copies the audio, but you still need to place it into a MIDI track. I'm sure there's an element here or a step that I'm missing, or I could actually cut back on my steps. But for me, this was the element that I was taught doing years ago, and I just keep doing it and following it. So I copy the audio to MIDI, bring it into an instrument track, and I have this here. What this allows me to do is if you see it, it's following every bass note that you're playing. Just like the synth option I was doing where I was trying to extend the low end of bass to get super, super clean low end out of a synth bass, this is doing the same thing. But here's the issue here compared to low end. In low end, waveforms are really super slow and sluggish. So when you're combining that with a bass, you get a really nice glued effect that doesn't kind of fight or step on each other. For this, or anytime you do something with a little more bite and transience, you're gonna run into things like overfilling and flamming with the original sound. When you're doing this, it's not perfect. 
So you're really going to have to go in and hard, hard edit and focus on the performance. And for me, that's actually part of the fun. I will spend a little time going and cutting parts out, adding parts depending on what they need to be, and making sure that not everything is landing so tight with the bass guitar that it starts flamming and fighting, which makes things sound robotic and boring anyways. So after I have that edited, I will pull up the instrument I'm using, which for this instance is the Atura Clavinet V. This is a really cool box as it allows me to use some pedals and stuff, but it also has a simulation of a guitar amp, which some of these uh, clavinets just actually sound like clavinets. Then if you want to use like a guitar amplifier after it, you have to use a different plugin and it gets a little messy. This has an Ottawa, but I'm not going to use that today because I want to actually physically use the wah pedal that comes with Pro Tools. And this will allow me to physically wah the actual signal while the performance is happening. And then what I can do is write that as automation in the position and play it to the performance and it captures that. Before I get into any of that, I just wanna play the track just as the track without the clavinet and then we can talk more about that process of adding the clavinet. First and foremost, what we're hearing here is a killer band in the studio capturing a live performance. And I feel like, how do we step it up just a little bit? Listening with the bass guitar and the vocals going and the guitars on the left and right, organ kind of doing its stabs. For me, I feel like we're missing, I don't know, some of this funky liveness thing that I'm hearing in some of these older records where I could feel like the bass guitar in this track needs to be a little more prominent melodically. And how do we do that without adding a ton of EQ or not? We could add the element of a clavinet or something like that. Let's listen to just the clavinet part. Not very exciting, but if we put the wah in after it, what we can do is play the wah to the part and to the track. Now, if I write the automation on the wah pedal, it's going to actually take that automation and print it into the track. So when I play it back, it's always there in the mixes and recalls and such. If I don't like it, I can always go back and fix it. A little funky. This will allow me to do, if I go through the entire song, it allows me to play to the song, to the track. Now, if I was tracking this for real, I would actually have the full band on and the vocal. So I knew if there was some cuts coming up, like a guitar solo or an organ solo, or there was some cue parts on the main vocal, like the choruses with the background vocals, I would tame that back so it wasn't poking out. <laughs> It's a very subtle move, again, like most things I do, but what it's doing is it's adding a little bit of life to the mix, 
You gotta be very tasteful though. You don't wanna just start whamming it off and you don't want it to sit above the vocal because what that will do is just make it just sound embarrassing. So by having this here, I feel like what I would normally do is try to find a way to come out with, okay, if I can hear it, great, I'm gonna pull it back even more a tiny bit. And then I'll start muting it with the bass. So if I'm listening to it, let's take it during the vocal part, instead of it being in the solo because I was playing a little light there. Remember, this is all just a creative approach. I felt like this track was sitting really great on its own, but it could have a little more life, a little more funky edge if we put a little more of a honkiness down on that bass, because the bass has really great melody to the track. You could do this again with multiple instruments. You could try this on anything. You could put a piano in there. I mean, the Beatles used to duplicate guitar solos with pianos mimicking the exact same part by fattening it up and creating a texture on its own. It's just a creative process and actually it's really fun to do. Most people can do it even if you're not musically inclined because it's already played in the MIDI format. You can just move around the notes to the taste you like it in. But in general, it just adds a sense of funkiness, which is always fun. So that is my little trick for this week. I appreciate you all. I say happy mixing and have a great week. Yeah, baby, don't